Well, let's get started. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is the first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. As you can see on the title on today's video, I'm going to be giving you my full review with spoilers of Paranormal Activity Next of Chem or Paranormal Activity 7. Um, probably a surprise to some of you if you have been on my channel for a long time, probably you have heard me say it already. I don't like paranormal activity. I am, uh, I didn't want to watch it at first, but when I realized that there were some people that were expecting my review on it, I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, this is why I'm here to give my opinion. Even maybe if I wasn't excited to watch the movie, if you want to hear me say something about it, then I will. So I'm doing this for you guys. So. But if it wasn't for the channel, I wasn't going to even to watch it. Now, a little disclaimer is that, as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them just to see if this is worth watching or not, the description box down below. You're going to find my spoiler-free review on my blog because I like to give you guys the options. So giving ahead that little talk disclaimer ahead, let's get into the video. Now, like I said, this is the seventh one. The sixth one was supposed to be the last one. But this one serves as a standalone movie on the franchise. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that the movie is not 100% found footage. Like, for example, like on the first one, we have the whole shots are always from the cameras of Mika and Katie. But in this one, we have some scenes and some shots that, of course, they add in found footage. So I don't know if that works for you. Maybe you don't like that about the movie. The movie has 22 on Rotten. It doesn't have good reviews, but it's horror. So at the end of the day, having bad reviews doesn't really mean nothing here because sometimes the movie can have really bad reviews and can be really good. But that wasn't precisely the case here. But well, this movie is going to follow a young woman that is trying to discover what happened with her mother who disappeared years ago until she discovers that a terrifying truth about her mother's past. Now, the protagonist is Margaret. Now, the movie, uh, the production ended on June or July of this year. I'm not 100% sure, but the movie is set on March. So, of course, gives the dates or every single day. So, we have this girl called Margaret. She is on a dentist and she's explaining that she's about to meet someone that is kind of related to her mother because she was abandoned on a hospital the day that she was born by a woman and they have nothing else but of course the movie kind of implies that she has spent the rest of her life wanting to know about her mother so she investigates and she did some dna tests and she eventually found that her mother was amish and she found a man that was correlated to where the mother was supposed to come from so they meet we have that meeting and while they're talking and everything and the day a few days after she travels to new york and she gets there and they travel upstate they don't really specify in which part of the state they're going but of course we know that it's on the outside not on the city it's really far because of course it's something that it's normal on the amish um I am not 100% sure of how accurate, like of course, there are things that we know about the Amish, how they dress, some how they work and their traditions and things. But of course, I don't know how much of that was shown on the film is true, what things can be changed in order to like give more drama. If you understand, sometimes they change things a bit. So. But just saying. So they arrive to this farm, they meet everyone, and they start like documenting everything because she's supposed to be doing a documentary about her mother. Now, about her mother, we don't really know much, although that her name was Sarah, and that basically she had her outside of marriage. So, of course, Amish, they don't work like that. And it was also what they call it at some point an Englishman, that is basically an outsider to the Amish community. So, of course, she couldn't keep the baby and she had to give it away. And that's what she did. They even show us sometime a footage of their mother leaving the baby on the hospital, but she leave it really far away. Like, she drove for hours to leave it as far as she could. But why the reality is that, that it's what starts bringing the mystery because 
some girls that are from the Amish, they say at some point that they aren't supposed to be talking about Sarah and they start to like acting really weird and the leader says that the option there was to give the baby to a married couple, not that she had to give it away outside of the community. So that's the first thing that really brings up like why she take away the baby. So the movie is one hour and 37 minutes long, but I felt like it was way slower. I, like I said, this is not my type of film, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be like biased or something. I'm going to be honest, I'm being honest. So the movie for me felt a little bit longer than it was. So at some point, where they are staying on the farm because they weren't even supposed to be like staying there because they didn't like add gift like a call because of course they don't have phone service and they had like some troubles and they stay on a hotel then they return to the farm and when they're staying there's this house we could say that has like a third level attic whatever you want to call it and Margaret, she wakes up at one night because she hears footsteps. Like, you know, when you have like a really loud neighbor that's sleeping up to you, you know? So she wakes up in the middle of the night. She gets her camera, of course. She realized that the room that she's in, it was supposed to be her mother's room. And she found a letter. This is when she talks with the leader and, she's, and, she, and he explains to her about her giving away the baby. But the thing is that she kind of gets on camera something that was on the room, but what? It doesn't really show much, but it's treating it as like a ghost type of thing. But the movie is not about ghosts. Like, of course, when it comes to paranormal activity, it was supposed to be literally paranormal activity, meaning ghosts, demons, that type of entities, but here, something completely different. Now, of course, something that I said a few videos back is I don't want to spoil the whole thing here. I'm trying, I'm just giving more of a brief about it, but of course with some spoilers. Now, they eventually get to the middle of the woods that they are saying because Amish, of course, they live in the middle of nowhere. And they realize the first night that they're going to the woods and they aren't supposed to go like the boy that they met before and brought them to the farm he's like you're not supposed to go there don't go there of course if they don't go there there is no movie they realize that it's a church but it's really on the outside but when you go on the inside it doesn't precisely look like a church and have some paintings and things that are quite weird so it kind of looks like some demon and like when you have paintings that are trying to give a story or maybe a ritual, that type of thing, that's trying to give you something. And there is a hole on the ground. Of course, they go, something is there. What? We don't know. At some point, they want to leave because things get worse and they're showing some resistance. And even at some point, Margot is visited by something and she's like, and she's like tossed to the ceiling and she's like knocked out and the next day she wakes up like covered in blood like it was her menstrual cycle but of course we know that that wasn't and the doctors are saying that she's going to be fine but the ones that are with her they want to fix the car because the car mysteriously the battery wasn't working so they start walking because of course they don't have no other way of going to the nearest town. They found a mailman and when they're talking to him, they were like, yeah, we're staying at this farm with the Amish family. And they were like, they're not Amish, like a mayor of Red Flag there. <laughs> so they get to the store and they get the party for the car and they search a little bit on the internet. And they realize that they are more of a cult that they worship the devil. Like, that's the simplest way for me to say it. And of course, they get really scared and they want to leave. Oh shit, what the fuck? What the fuck? So, eventually, they get to the farm, they're trying to leave. This is when thing goes madness and now they are all running around they're not supposed to go out because some bells are running and margaret is nowhere to be seen but she's on the church 
she's been taken away because they're trying to make her as a sacrifice. <sighs> and yeah, Daryl tried to escape and the movie, you, for some time, you're thinking, weren't they going to die? Because they basically survived throughout the whole movie until the very end. I'm not going to say you who dies, who survives. Not all of them die, of course. And basically the movie ends on a kind of open ending. So I don't know. I, oh my God, probably I am even white. So I, something, <laughs> something like, I don't know. Sounded, oh my God, I don't claim anything from this movie. Now, the thing is that the movie ended on an open ending, meaning that it can be another one. But the reality is that most of the times, the type of sequels, they come if the movie is successful. But the movie hasn't been. Now, I'm going to be honest, like I said from the very beginning, I don't enjoy paranormal activity movies at all. I don't like it and I never understand the hype. Still, I did watch it. I gave it a chance. It's not the type of movie that I will rewatch. By the way, it's available only on Paramount+. Plus. It's not on movie theaters or anything else, so if you have the streaming service, you're going to be able to watch it. Um, if not, I think that you're probably going to have to wait if it's released on DVD or another streaming service. Maybe yeah, Amazon, I am not even sure, probably not, but just saying. But the thing is that the movie is not boring, but it's not the type of movie that really captures you and keeps you like 100% there. Like there are points when you're like, mm, okay, when something is happening, like it takes some time to get to the action, if you want to call it that way. Like it doesn't build up very well the tension, like it goes like a big chunk of things going normal and then suddenly brings you all the things one behind the another. It's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> So for me, that they were really well. Also, it was really bizarre for me, the fact that it wasn't 100% on film footage. But like I said, there's something that probably you won't like and maybe will get your experience a little bit different. Maybe that will take away a little bit of the magic, if we want to call it, of the film. I don't know. But it definitely didn't felt like a paranormal movie at all. Like seriously, it felt like a standalone movie and I think that that could have been work. Like if this movie wasn't attached to the franchise, just like the run term that came out this year, I said the same thing. That movie could have been a standalone movie, probably would have worked better. It's the same with this one. Now, if I would recommend this one, eh, maybe, yeah, if you like this type of movies, I don't know. Um... The acting, it's okay, convincing, it's convincing on special effects, they're decent, they're good, the things up here, convincing. This is the type of movie that if you get scared really easily, you could get scared. If not, nothing is going to happen to you. Like I was straight faced the whole time. Like the jump scares, I wouldn't say that they are predictable, but I don't know, they didn't work. At least for me, um, I'm really hard actually to get on the jump scares. Because of, I am so used to watch horror movies that come to a point when you're like, nothing happens. You won't get a reaction. So if you get scared pretty, pretty easily, probably this movie is going to do something on you. If not, you're going to be fine. Still, like I said, I would recommend it only if you like this type of movie. It's like, it's simple, nothing too deep not predictable the reality is that not predictable that's something that will give points like you wouldn't catch the ending until it starts to happen like it gets really obvious in the last 20 minutes because they basically straight say it to you so you know what is going to happen and how things are going to be turning but before that you wouldn't have idea of how the movie is going to move in what or what direction it's going to take so points for that i mean i don't like movies when they're too predictable so points for that but at the end i will give this movie a 6 out of 10 and a 2.5 almost 3 out of 5 like i don't want to be too harsh because the reality is i don't feel like it wasn't the worst movie of the year like definitely it wasn't but it's not the best either like, i will put it on the middle so basically that's it for my opinion um yeah I don't regret watching it, like you're probably thinking that you, no, I don't. So it felt a little bit like a waste of time, 
But it's better to watch it rather than spend the whole time thinking, who have I like it? Would I haven't? Who knows? Like, I don't like to keep like that. Like, I want to know if I'm going to actually like a movie or not. And well, this is all for the video. Um, next video, I have a review coming on Tuesday about a Mexican horror movie called Come Play With Me or Juega Conmigo. Um, it's in Spanish, but you can watch it with the English subtitles only on Pantalla streaming service. Um, they have a, a free trial. Um, the movie, it's with a Puerto Rican actress. This is why I watched it and I knew about the movie since in case that you didn't know. I'm Puerto Rican, I am from Puerto Rico, I live in Puerto Rico, just in case. In case that you haven't already realized that I am not an English speaker, I know that I have an accent, some people have said it on the comments. But well, what can I do? And well, this is all for the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments if you watch it, you haven't, you plan on it, let me know. And well, this is all, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!